and record at the cloud. Okay, so I think we're I think we're recording now. Hopefully this is gonna work. <laughs> Hi everybody. It may say Pat Hints under my name. I am not Pat Hints. I'm Sean Talbot. Um, we're gonna talk tonight about. So this is a Thursday night call. Um, our Tuesdays are typically our sort of standard uh, Amare meeting that, that that Pat and I will do. He'll do a little bit on the business side. I'll do a little bit on the product side. Um, our Thursday nights are either open mic nights where we do um, sort of just question and answer, you know, rapid fire kind of stuff. And Pat and I chit chat about a bunch of things. Um, or we do what we call deep dives. So we've done now about, I don't know, six or eight deep dives into different areas of, of health and wellness, into different areas of our products. We've done them on depression and anxiety. We've done mental focus. We've done gut health. We've done immune system. We've done a whole bunch of different things. And tonight, um, I'm going to dive into the, into a couple of areas um, that are really kind of around behavior, um, specifically ADHD uh, and autism, um, and try to give you a perspective for those conditions and not necessarily how our products treat them. So right here at the top, I want to say this is not a call about how Amari products can treat the disease of autism or the disease of ADHD. Um, rather, I'm going to try to give you a perspective for what these diseases are all about, you know, that the fact that they are very much gut brain axis disruptions, um, and then talk about some of the products that are, are, are really focused on gut brain axis disruptions. And so the separation there, the sort of separation of church and state is that, is, is that we have to reframe what we're, what we're actually talking about tonight. So when I, as a nutritional biochemist, for people who don't know me, let me just say this real quick. My, my PhD is in nutritional biochemistry and the kind of work that I do, some people call nutritional psychology. So I look at how does something that we eat, a food, a supplement, some sort of bioactive compound, how does that change the biochemistry in the body in terms of your neurotransmitter balance or your free radical load or your inflammation or or something like that, stress hormones, for example. And then how does that biochemical change result in a psychological outcome? Some sort of a change in mood state uh, or depression or mental focus or behavior or motivation or that kind of stuff. So a lot about a lot, what I'll talk about tonight is how can we use this thing from a dietary perspective to have a biochemical change or a physiological change in the body? And how can that result in some sort of a psychological or a behavioral outcome? Um, and so that right there, I just described um, either you're, you're feeling great and everything is in balance or you're out of balance and things are not great. And that not great might be a behavioral issue, uh, you know, somewhere on the, on the autism spectrum disorder spectrum. It could be a mental focus disorder that's on the spectrum. So it's a reframing of, uh, you know, sort of labeling something a disease versus saying, hey, here's this biochemical disruption and here's a way to naturally rebalance that sort of a thing, okay? So I may come back to that theme um, as we get into some specific slides. Uh, but what I want to do now is hopefully this is going to change. There we go. For, for new people who are coming on the first time, and I see a ton of brand new names up here who aren't sort of our, our sort of regular attendees, um, I want to step you through just a few slides and I'm going to go through them relatively quickly until we get it before we get into the meat of our discussion tonight um, about Amare and, and, and give you a perspective for why we're coming at this problem the way that we are. So we're a mental wellness company. Here's our mission statement. We create natural mental wellness products for a community of passionate people who desire an extraordinary life. We are all about 100% about mental wellness. And what we mean by that is that everybody is somewhere along what you see here, this mental wellness continuum. We want people to realize that no matter where you are on the continuum, you know, in a bad state, in sort of a so-so eh, state, or in an amazing state, our products can actually help you get a little bit better, a little bit better. You, so you can think about that, you know, no matter where you are on the, on the continuum, we're trying to get you higher up to the right-hand side. And, and the, the, the interesting piece about it isn't so much just that we can move you and we can move you pretty quickly and we can move you pretty meaningfully, but that we can do it in a, in a natural way that addresses multiple aspects of your body. So a lot of times, and this is kind of a, you know, did you know thing that many, many people have no understanding about that, you know, when we don't feel the way we want to feel, 
we think it's a brain problem. And sometimes it is. Sometimes there's things that we need to target in the brain, but very often the disruption is further down in the body. It's in your gut. It's in what we call the second brain. So you can see these, these three bullet points here. How you feel is not just in your head, it's also in your gut. And so that's why we talk a lot about gut integrity and microbiome and gut inflammation and, you know, and things like that because a lot of times the disruption that we're talking about is in the gut and that disruption is being transmitted to the brain and that's why the brain is not behaving the way that we want it to be. Um, our second brain includes the microbiome and plays a major role in mental wellness. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the most important of all, you can do something about it. There are very effective, very well substantiated from a research perspective, uh, very effective ways to rebalance your microbiome, maintain your gut integrity, get your gut brain access back to where it needs to be, and, and, and that's gonna be good for a lot of people. So I see a bunch of questions coming in. I'm gonna see if I can see what some of these might be. Make my way down here. Um, I wanna make sure that everything is going okay for the, can't see the chat room right now, there we go. Okay, great. So they're just, they're just questions. They're not sort of uh, any technical difficulties that we're experiencing. Um, so, okay, mental wellness continuum. Everybody sort of gets where we're going there. Um, I, we also share lots and lots of statistics. I'm not gonna spend too much time on these introductory slides because there are deep dives available about all of these kinds of things, about pain and the hundreds of millions of people who are suffering with that, about depression and the hundreds of millions of people who are suffering with that, and how that people are spending lots of money. The reason I put this up here is to make the point that it's probably a heck of a lot more people are suffering with these problems, even if it's just feeling burned out every day than you think. And, and, I, and, I, and I say that, and I, I sound like a broken record sometimes because I say this all the time, but it's, it, it's the kind of work that I do. When you see somebody in that state of depression or anxiety or chronic stress or burnout or brain fog, that person, that individual feels as if, it's, as if they're the only ones that are experiencing what they're experiencing. And it's important for us to say, hey, look, you are not alone. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a phenomenon that we call sickness behavior, right? It's actually a biological response to these, to these disruptions in your biochemistry and your physiology and your neurotransmitters and everything else to get your body to go, all right, I'm the only one here. I need to just hunker down and wait for this to go away. I need to hunker down and, 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 and allow my body time to heal. And unfortunately, if we don't go in and actively facilitate that healing process, that person's just gonna be stuck there. And that's a terrible, terrible place to be. So lots and lots of people are in these situations. More statistics. So big a problem that the World Health Organization has already identified stress and mental wellness challenges as the health epidemic of the 21st century. Right now, as we sit here, the beginning of 2018, stress and depression and all of that sort of mental health umbrella is the number one leading cause of global disability. Right, number one, ahead of everything else that you might think of, ahead of cancer, ahead of heart disease, because a lot of these mental wellness issues have physical, physical health um, uh, uh, side effects. You know, um, um, because of uh, because of the biochemistry that's involved that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So I'm going to go here real quick. I have a little bit of background noise, so I'm going to remute everybody. All right, beautiful. Um, Lots and lots of money being spent on this, on this category. Um, it's the number one problem in the world. Hundreds of millions of people spending hundreds of billions of dollars. In the next decade or two, th this is going to be a trillion dollar industry, so to speak, a trillion dollar category. It's growing faster than we ever expected it would. Um, and the science is changing in this particular area that makes this, I mean, the hottest area of science right now. So uh, lots of people are gonna be paying attention here. And the, 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 the interesting nuance, the interesting wrinkle here from, from my perspective as a scientist is that the science has changed so much around mental wellness, literally in the last five to 10 years, that we think of it completely, completely differently than we did just a decade ago. And, and, it, and it really is this idea of, yes, we're still gonna sense these problems here in the brain, 
but the but the cause of the problem is not always in the brain it's in the brain sometimes but sometimes it's in the gut sometimes it's in this axis this communication network in between which is comprised of nerves and neurotransmitters and hormones and immune system uh, of, of cells um, it for people who really want to get into this area and understand the new science around mental wellness and new science around the gut brain axis this is the book that I recommend it's called the mind gut connection it talks about the microbiome Biome, talks about the gut, talks about this axis, talks about the whole connection between them and the and the bi-directional communication. It's written by a guy at UCLA, Emron Meyer, um, who's actually on our scientific advisory board. He literally is the guy when it comes to understanding gut brain axis. It's a, it's a it's a very very readable book. Um, so if you want to dig in a little bit, I would I would highly recommend picking that up. So a lot of this change in how we think about mental wellness has come from understanding more about the microbiome. And, you know, people have said to me, um, well, we've known about the microbiome for a long time. We've known that there are a hundred trillion bacteria in our guts for a good long time. We just thought they were there as kind of freeloaders, right? You know, they, they make a few vitamins, so that's good. They earn their keep that way that we can absorb into the body. Uh, they, they help with digestion, they help with pH levels and things like that. But only in the last five or so years have we had the scientific techniques, the, the, the genetic techniques to measure what was down there and then even different scientific techniques to measure what they're making, their sort of bacterial end products. They're, they're producing that are actually having a health effect throughout the entire body. So I won't go too, you know, too much into this, but um, people do ask me that question, like how have we learned so much about it just in the last couple of years? And it really is because of computing power, right? We, you know, the, the, the whole sort of genetics revolution of being able to sequence all the genes. If you look there, it says bacterial genes, 20 million. If we think of our bodies as having 23,000 genes, that took a long time to decode. If we want to decode 20 million genes, that's going to take an even longer time. And so we never would have been able to put a dent in that except for some of the, some of the computing power um, leaps that have happened. You know, we're able to actually do measurements very quickly, fairly quickly, to find out exactly who's there, what they're doing, how they're working, how they're working with each other, what they're producing. Uh, and that has, that has really fundamentally shifted how we think about not just mental wellness, but, but, but health in general. Um, and, and, and it really comes down to this for the lay person, right? I, I, I will actually come back and talk a little bit more specifically about specific strains of bacteria and things like that a little bit later in this call. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wanted to mention some of these microbiome gut brain axis things because the conditions that we're going to talk about tonight, ADHD and autism, for so long have been thought of as just brain problems, and they're clearly not. Um, gut problems are almost 100% of the time what we refer to as comorbid. They come together. So if you're having these brain problems, you almost 100% of the time also have gut problems. And people who have kids who are in those situations realize that. Um, and, uh, you know, stress can make the gut problems work worse. Gut problems can make the, the, the brain problems worse. So it's important for us to understand this relationship between the brain and the gut. Uh, but for the lay person, it really comes down to something as simple as what you see on the slide right now. When you're in balance, you're going to feel better. When you're in balance, you're going to perform better. When you're in balance, you're going to have fewer problems. And when you're out of balance, things sometimes can go completely kablooey. Um, it, you know, it's not just having a stomachache. It's not just not being able to focus. It's not just having behavioral issues, right? There's a cascading effect where one makes the next one worse, makes the next one worse. It's a very, very vicious cycle that we'll talk about some more in a little bit. But the good news is once you establish balance in one of those areas, you can sometimes get a vicious cycle going one way to become a virtuous cycle going the other way, where instead of imbalance leading to imbalance, you're getting balance leading to more balance. And that's a very good place to be because you can build into better and better and better and better and, and performing better and things like that. So we'll get into that in a little bit. This network that goes back and forth, this is really important to understand. You know, so if we think of ADD and autism and a couple other things I'll talk about tonight as these sort of brain dysfunctional kinds of situations, you know, the signals that the brain is getting have to come from somewhere, right? Sometimes they're coming from the, 
the, the HPA axis, the hypoth hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. That's sort of your stress response system. So sometimes the signals are coming from there in the form of uh, hormones uh, like cortisols or adrenalines or you know what, now what we call epinephrine. Um, they could be coming from the gut because the gut makes mo much more serotonin and dopamine and GABA, some of these very... Um, very uh, uh, overlapping important neurotransmitters, you know, the gut is making 90% of your serotonin, probably 50 to 70% of your dopamine. So those signals have to somehow get to the brain. And those neurotransmitters can't go from the gut and bleed out into the systemic circulation and then leak into the brain. It doesn't work that way. They probably um, change their signals from these chemical signals that the gut makes into neurological signals that can cross the blood-brain barrier. So this, the, the, this, this axis is a very redundant, overlapping, shifting communication network that goes both ways. And so you have to make sure that each aspect of that network is is, is coordinated and is efficient because you could be making all the serotonin in the world down in the gut, but if you can't transmit that signal, your brain's not gonna get the signal. Your brain's not gonna know what's happening in the rest of the body. So we need to prime those, uh, those systems so we're getting the right signal across. So it comes down to this, healthy status versus unhealthy status. And if you have unhealthy status, you can see that behavior and cognition and emotion and all of these sorts of things are, are out of balance. More pain, more stress, more inflammation. Um, it, 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 like I said, it gets into this vicious cycle that sort, of, that sort of builds and builds and builds on itself. But if you can get somebody back into balance, it's not like we're taking that dysfunctional disease state and making somebody healthy, right? It's, it, it's not that, that's not the framing I want people to understand. I want them to understand you're out of balance in all these different ways. And if I rebalance you here, that's gonna help you function better. And then if I rebalance you here, it's gonna function better. And if I rebalance you here, it's gonna make you function better. So it's a progressive um, additive, but complementary process of getting somebody rebalanced and rebalanced to a better place, a better place, a better place. That's a different way of thinking about it. Even some of the um, experts in these areas who will say, here's what we need to, to, to fix about ADD. Here's what we need to fix about autism. It's, it's, in a, it's, it's almost saying instead of taking a synthetic therapy, like a drug, we're gonna take a natural therapy like a drug. And I don't want people to think of it that way. I really want people to think of it as this progressive system of rebalancing, right? You're out of balance and that's causing these problems. We're gonna rebalance you and help you have less problems and fewer problems and, and more, more, more good days, so to speak. Um, so so let's, let's, let's get into the meat of it now. What are we talking about? So we're gonna talk about broadly about three different kinds of conditions. So the first one is ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Here's the, here's the definition of it here. Um, anyone who's ever been in this situation before themselves or with, uh, with a kid or with an adult, I mean, there's plenty of adult ADHD out there. A brain disorder marked by an ongoing pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity and impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. Um, it's about one in 10 kids right now. And, and maybe not quite that high in adults. A lot of times, um, as we go into our adult years, neurotransmitters change, hormones change. Sometimes you can kind of, quote unquote, grow out of it. Um, sometimes you just learn kind of, you know, socially and, and, um, and uh, you know, societally sort of how to behave in those situations. So you kind of <laughs> fake it till you make it, so to speak. Um, in adults, a lot of times ADHD issues, um, you get fired a lot, right? You can't focus on your job. You can't get the job done because you're a little bit over here, you're a little bit over here. You can't focus. You can't, you don't have, you know, what we talk about in our, in our depression discussions. You don't have a high level of, um, of uh, you know, cognitive flexibility to be able to think yourself through stressful situations. That's actually a, that's actually an overlap between ADD symptomology and, and, and depression symptoms. Um, but it's, it's a lot of people who are suffering with this kind of thing. Um, maybe I'll share this story right now. We were in a situation, um, gosh, this is probably 10 years ago now, with my son, who now is a sophomore in high school, he's 16. When he was in fifth grade, 
his teachers told us that we needed to, you know, the, <laughs> the, the recommendation was you need to medicate this kid, right? Because of, you know, didn't want to pay attention in class kind of, kind of situations, right? Like, like, like a lot of fifth grade boys. Um, and so we took a natural approach. Instead of medicating them, we decided we were going to use um, two nutraceuticals, one called L-theanine, which is an amino acid that's naturally found in green tea leaves. And the other one was a, was a, a collection of polyphenols that are sometimes called OPCs, which stands for oligomeric proanthocyanidins. Um, and we chose um, a way of delivering those through New Zealand pine bark because it's the, it's the highest, most, uh, most concentrated source. So we took L-theanine, uh, a brand called Sun Theanine, and New Zealand pine bark, a brand called Enzogenol. And we started adding, he couldn't swallow capsules at this point. We started adding them into his smoothies every morning. Um, after about a week, uh, we're in there picking him up again, and his teacher said, thank you for taking our advice to medicate him, right? And we didn't, but we got the same sort of an end benefit in his behavior through these natural therapies, right, that are helping with modulating brain waves and modulating uh, 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 neurotransmitter balance and, and helping with memory and helping with, with you know, uh, impulsivity and focus and all those sorts of things. So uh, the reason I mention that is because to this day, he takes those products. And now, sophomore in high school, he will actively go and get those products off of the shelf and take them when he needs them. Um, it's easy for him to do now because th those exact two ingredients at the exact same levels are in some of our products that I'll talk about later. But it, it just shows that you can get a meaningful benefit from these natural ingredients. Um, the whole family has been taking these ingredients too because we saw what it did for him and we all wanted those benefits. So we've been taking them for years and years as well. Um, the next one, autism. Now this, you know, people have heard the terminology of ASD, autism spectrum disorder. It's a wide, wide range of behaviors. Um, it, everything from speech and nonverbal communication to other things about, about texture, whether it's, you know, clothing texture, food texture, um, there, there, there's, a, there's a wide, wide range of being on the spectrum, so to speak. Um, and it's a lot of kids. It's one in 68 is the latest sort of agreed upon statistic. Um, there was a study that just came out last year that suggested that maybe it's more like one in 45. Um, I'm not sure if those data have been replicated yet, but one in 68 is a pretty, is a pretty solid number. Um, and so these kids, you know, generally have a range of, you know, um, being, ha having challenges with social situations, having challenges with, with repetitive behaviors or, or sort of compulsive behaviors. Uh, I mentioned before about, you know, sometimes they're verbal, sometimes they're not verbal, wide, wide range. And one of the challenges with autism spectrum disorders is that there's a genetic component that's, that's, that we know is there. Um, there's an environmental component that we know is there. There is a probably a dietary component that we know is there, um, and so it's a it's it, a lot of times I talk about mental wellness issues being multifactorial, and to solve those mental wellness issues, if they're a multifactorial problem, we need a multifactorial solution to match up. You can't just come at these issues with one solution. You can't just say to somebody with, you know, in an, in, an, in an autism situation, well, you know what, all you need to do is cut out dairy and you'll be fine. You, you can't say to them, you know, that it's a one particular vitamin. You can't say that it's, that, it's, that it's one particular environmental toxin, right? Could be all kinds of different things. I'm gonna give what I think is a little bit different spin on it that maybe you haven't heard before. Um, as we go through this. And it, it, as you might imagine, it has to do with microbiome and gut-brain access. And then this last one, um, many people on the call have, have maybe never heard of this before. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's called panda, sometimes it's called pandas. Um, and it's not the big furry white and black bears that we all think of. Um, but let me, let me just read what this, pan thank goodness there's, a, there's an acronym for it because it stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with streptococcal infections. So you get strep, right? You get infected with strep throat or a strep infection somewhere in your body. And this can lead to a, a disruption across your entire immune system, um, result in gut problems, result in systemic inflammation, which some of that happens in the brain, some of that happens in the gut, some of these immune system dysfunctions um, result in miscommunication throughout the body. Remember I said that that's one, 
very important part of this axis. And then the, and then the child, typically it's a child. It can happen in adults, but um, you know, then it's not, doesn't have the pediatric aspect to it. But then, you know, it, it, it's almost like overnight, these kids develop these obsessive compulsive disorders. They develop tics, they develop, you know, what looks like kind of a cross between some of the symptoms we would expect in autism and some of the symptoms we would expect in ADHD. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, completely disconcerting to the parents because here was this, you know, this normal kid who got this infection that, you know, something happened after the infection to change their behaviors drastically. Um, and so, I mean, that might be as many as one in 200 kids, right? So you can see one in 200, that's not rare. One in 68, that's actually pretty common. And one in 10, that's something that guaranteed you know somebody who, who has one of these issues, right? So um, they're not, um, they're not rare conditions by any stretch of the imagination. I'm gonna go back and mute one more time. Look like some new people came on, which is awesome. Um, so what do we do when we're in those situations? One thing that each of these categories has in common is the fact that they're related to neurotransmitter disruptions, right? But remember what I said before, the brain as the supercomputer is certainly going to perceive whatever's happening in the body. And I think it's very logical for people as it has been for hundreds of years to say, if I see a problem here, the problem must be in there. The, you know, the problem is being perceived by my brain, so the problem must be in my brain. It must be a problem with my brain neurotransmitters. So, and, and, and that is, it is, uh, almost definitely not the case. Some of the problem might be here, but I really think the majority of the problem is in the axis and is in the microbiome and the gut. And I'll explain why I think that in just a little bit. Uh, and it's not just my opinion, it's based on very good research. Um, so you can see what you're seeing here is dopamine, uh, one of our very, um, I, I mean, very <laughs> sort of noticeable neurotransmitters, right? This is the this is the um, this is the neurotransmitter of of sometimes referred to as the neurotransmitter of motivation. Um, this is the sometimes people call it the skydiver neurotransmitter. This is the one that is is there for um, sort of seeking out uh, um, uh, experiences and the and the jolt from those experiences. People can get sort of a, you know sort of addicted to that dopamine rush. Um, it's mostly associated with alertness, but it also has sort of overlapping effects in these other areas. Serotonin is kind of our happiness neurotransmitter. Norepinephrine is sort of our focus neurotransmitter. So if you think of these things, if any of those are out of balance, you're going to have an issue and some aspect of how you feel, some aspect of how you behave. It could be attention issues like you see up here, which are primarily dopamine, norepinephrine. There are appetite issues. There are, there are, um, there are issues with um, what, sometimes what we refer to as um, anhedonia, um, hedonia referring to sort of, you know, you know, feelings of, 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 um, of satisfaction and enjoyment and things like that. People who have anhedonia just don't get enjoyment from anything, right? You could go on the best vacation of your life and you're just kind of, yeah, okay. You know, or they experience something, you know, this happens a lot with, with sort of type A personalities. Um, you are, a, you are striving and striving and striving towards a goal and you achieve the goal and you just go, I don't know, that wasn't, that wasn't all it's cracked up to be, right? You don't get the enjoyment from that, from that experience. Most of the, the, the mental problems that, that are, are experienced in the modern world are not just one or the other of these. That's why a lot of the anti-depression drugs that are SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors that work primarily on the serotonin, will work in a certain sense. They'll make you feel different, because they're adjusting your levels of neurotransmitter, serotonin, but they don't necessarily make you feel good. And that's because your feeling of not good is probably due to more than just your serotonin. Um, some, of the, some of the ADD drugs now are focusing on norepinephrine. They're selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So they increase your level of norepinephrine as a way to get you to focus more. Sometimes that is effective and sometimes not because a lot of times that attention deficit problem may have something to do with norepinephrine, but may also have something to do with dopamine. So the, 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 the concept here is that the overlapping nature and the, 
the interacting nature of these neurotransmitters um, makes it makes it challenging sometimes to figure out exactly what the um, what the right choice is going to be. Remember, multifactorial problem needs a multifactorial solution. So you can look at it this way. This is an even more complicated way of looking at the overlap between each one of those neurotransmitters. And, th th and these are just three, right? There are, there are th many, many more neurotransmitters we could be talking about that are associated with energy or relaxation or mental focus or, you know, your gut is making a lot, your brain is making a lot, you know, they're sending their signals through the, through the axis. So, you know, if you're in balance or out of balance in any of these different ways, you're gonna feel slightly different things. So we can see ADD, or ADHD down here, and many, many depressions are, you know, uh, between serotonin and dopamine, or sorry, serotonin and norepinephrine. You can see, here's anhedonia I was talking about before, this feeling of just not being satisfied or pleased or made happy by, by anything. So you can see where um, there's, there's nuances of trying to figure out well, is it a serotonin issue? Is it a dopamine issue? Is it a norepinephrine issue? It's probably a little bit of all of that. And so you need to come at this issue with a multifactorial solution. Uh, and the reason I harp on that is because nutrition and supplements and proper diet and lifestyle interventions are as multifactorial as we can get. Um, so we can talk about stress management. We can talk about sleep. We can talk about exercise. We can talk about nutrition and proper diet. We can talk about supplementation. We can talk about um, social interactions. We can talk about all of these, and I haven't named a single drug yet. And the reason for that is that everything that I listed is multifactorial in and of itself. So we can do, we can do a mindful meditation that has multifactorial effects on numerous neurotransmitters and numerous aspects of inflammation. And that's one of the reasons why lifestyle interventions, the kind of things that Amari is trying to bring to market um, are, are, I think, more effective against mental wellness challenges than some of the pharmaceutical options that are available. Um, and I don't mean to say, you know, are, we're better than fill in the blank with a drug, but to make the clear distinction that we're different. We are multifactorial in every single thing that we do. Even if you look at one of our supplements, our focus supplement or our mentobiotic supplement or our several that I'll talk about later, each one of those supplements is, is multifactorial. Each one of those ingredients when we're talking about an herbal ingredient is multifactorial versus what, you, what, you're, what, you're, what you're getting these days. And I know the screen just went blank, don't freak out. Um, if we're talking about, a, again, multifactorial solution and we come at it with a drug that only affects serotonin for depression and we haven't addressed these other guys up here, we're not gonna get a good effect. If we come at a focus issue with just a drug that increases norepinephrine, we're not gonna get the effect that we're looking for. And so what we've got access to right now, we have things like the king of them all when we talk about ADHD, Ritalin. We have Concerta, we have Vyvanse, we have Adderall. Um, every single one of those is basically methamphetamine, right? Let's just say what it is, right? There, they're a step or two, depending on the drug we're talking about, away from meth, but these are, these are strong stimulants. Um, Stratera isn't a stimulant, it's, a, it, it's one of those um, SNRIs, selective norepinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors. Um, but it also, even though it, it, it's, not a, it's not a stimulant that's gonna you know, give, give you a, you know, a dependence issue, um, it is associated with some cardiovascular problems and, and, uh, and, and um, uh, I believe it carries a black box warning uh, around, um, like some of the, some of the um, antidepressants, some of the SSRI antidepressants carry a black box warning around uh, increased risk of uh, uh, suicide ideation, you know, thoughts of suicide. Um, so the FDA has black box warnings, meaning the, you know, the boxed warning, sometimes called a black box warning, is FDA's most stringent warning about safety issues, basically saying that these drugs um, have, a, have, a, have a very well-described, very known high risk of side effects, such as dependence, such as suicide, such as cardiovascular issues. Um, and so the, the, the reason I say that is because if somebody recommends that you or your kid or anybody else goes on one of these drugs, or, or, or you know, I could put another ring of all the, all the antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs, and I could put another ring of all the sleep drugs. 
Um, what you need to do is think, okay, stop, think, is this powerful, potent pharmaceutical the, the, the first thing that I should be considering? Or should I put that to the side for a second and say, okay, that's there. That's maybe going to be the thing that I need. But why wouldn't I try a natural, multifactorial lifestyle sort of an intervention first to see if that can get me that rebalancing effect and get me to a place where I get the benefits that I'm looking for. And then I don't have to go after that. So, you know, as a nutritionist, you might expect me to say this, um, but because of the research that I do, I see this all the time, every single day, that if we can get somebody rebalanced, they feel better and they feel so much better, they'll take another uh, rebalancing lifestyle intervention and then another one and another one. And they'll eventually get to a point where they feel so much better that they want to help start helping other people get to where they are. So stop, think, act, right? Th these, these natural, non-side effects, multifactorial lifestyle interventions might be the first place and I think should be the first line therapy before you go to one of these potentially high side effects, uh, uh, very potent pharmaceutical uh, orientations. Uh, and the reason I say that is because we know that these mental wellness issues whether it's depression or anxiety or ADD or autism or pandas or any of those sorts of things, aren't just here. They're not just in your brain. They're probably mostly, not just somewhat, they're probably mostly in your gut. So look at the left-hand slide first. Um, this is just re-emphasizing re this idea that a lot of what's happening here in the brain, mood, cognition, emotion, is due to the fact that it's a microbial world, right? You know. If you think back to one of those earlier slides and you think about how much of our bodies are bacterial or microbial, it's the majority. It's the majority on a cellular basis. We're only 10% human. And it's the majority on a genetic basis. We're less than 1% human. And so that microbiome down here, this microbiota, inside our intestines is driving so much of our mental wellness and so much of our physical health. If we don't get this, in the right place, no matter what we do up here in the brain, we're gonna be spinning our wheels, right? It, it, let's, say, let's say that we fix so-called, so right? We get the neurotransmitters you know, in a more balanced state here, and we haven't fixed all this other gobbledygook that's happening in the rest of the body, we're gonna be continually, continually throwing a monkey wrench into whatever we've done in the brain. And so I look at it a different way. I look at it as a, from a biochemical perspective and say, okay, there's a problem up here in the brain. We might be able to do things for that. Let's go further down. Let, let, let's, go, let's go upstream and, see what's, and see, what's, see what's upstream of causing these problems in the first place. And it might be neurological. It might be problems in the nervous system like the vagus nerve. It might be something that's in the bloodstream, things like these cytokines, which are inflammatory compounds. It might be things in this HPA axis I mentioned before with your adrenal glands and your stress response system, cortisols. It might be something even further down. It might be your immune system that's sending the wrong signals or sending incomplete inefficient signals. It might be, um, it might be your, your neurotransmitters. So tryptophan is an amino acid that's a precursor for serotonin metabolism. So if your, if your amino acid profile is not where it needs to be, your neurotransmitters can't, can't be where they need to be. It might be a problem even further down, which is where your gut microbiome is. So in your, in your gut, you've got these bacteria, and we sometimes refer to them as good bacteria and bad bacteria. And the primary thing that makes a good bacteria, a good bacteria versus a bad one, a bad one, is the compounds they produce. So the compounds they produce are those neurotransmitters. Uh, and sometimes the compounds they produce are the precursors, like the amino acids, that other bacteria use to make the neurotransmitters that can go out and, and start their signaling cascade. Um, short chain fatty acids. These are the byproduct of your bacteria in your gut metabolizing fiber. Sometimes prebiotic fiber, sometimes the fiber from beans and oatmeal and green leafy vegetables and things like that. That's one of the reasons I recommend a Mediterranean style diet because it's high in fiber, it's high in flavonoids, it's high in polyphenols, 
all that can get these bacteria to produce more of these short chain fatty acids, which have an anti-inflammatory effect, which have an effect on these cells of the intestines, the enterocytes, to make them healthier, to keep them tight so you have good gut integrity. So the, only the right signals get across. We'll talk about leaky gut in a second. So there's a lot going on here that disruptions here or here or here or here or here can have problems in how our brain is functioning, right? And a, a lot of these focus issues, behavioral issues, um, you know, social interaction issues, um, you know, th th those all can have can have their 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 source can be you know across this whole network and that's why it's important to consider the network as a as a as a coordinated piece here's another way to look at it on the right hand side it's saying the same story it's just bringing in a couple of other other pieces around the immune system so your gut can also make here you see immune modulatory metabolites. These are compounds that will go out and will signal through the immune system that can signal through the adrenal system that can signal up to the brain. And the reason I want to put this slide in, which is telling kind of the same story, is because it has this one on here. These external stressors. Now here we have, I talked mostly just now about the gut sending signals outward up to the brain. But remember, this is a bi-directional communication network. So whatever we perceive out there in the world can also be transmitted down into the rest of the body. So, you know, the, the, the stressors that we encounter every day, and some of these external stressors are not just things we perceive. It's not just the traffic jam or the exam or the work deadline or the financial stress or the bills in your mailbox or your social interactions and relationships and things like that. Those are all sources of stress, but external stressors are anything that, that we encounter in the environment. Pesticides, poor diet, um, you know, the, the, the air we breathe, the water we drink, all of those kinds of things are external stressors in some way that get transmitted into the body and transmitted into the immune system and the nervous system and the stress response system and the gut. And so, you know, it reflects back. So if you're causing damage through that system and you're damaging the gut and you're damaging the microbiome, those signals are going to re be reflected back in terms of stress signals and, and inflammatory signals, etc. So, when we get in this sort of a situation, one of the things that is challenging is, you know, you have ADHD, you have autism, um, you have some of, some of the sort of similar overlap. A lot of times, in fact, this is a challenge because autistic kids can also have ADHD and ADHD kids can have some aspects, you know, along the, along the spectrum and they're very difficult to separate from from each other because they're because they're overlapping in, in some of their behaviors and so you know sometimes you'll you'll see you know res restrictive diets you know elimination diets you know stop eating a certain class of food um, gluten and milk be milk because of the protein there casein you know so there'll be diets to remove wheat uh, because of the gluten, which is a, which is a protein. There'll be diets to remove dairy because of casein, which is a protein. Uh, the reason for those recommendations, which I'm, I'm actually not opposed to at all, um, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why I don't think that's always the right choice in just a second. The reason that the, that the recommendation is made is because gluten from wheat and casein from milk or from, from any sort of dairy, um, those are pretty, um, pretty complex proteins that your gut is gonna to have to digest. If you've got a problem down here with your gut microbiome, with the lining of your intestine, with your gut integrity, with, with anything, any of the problems that we've just talked about in terms of signaling, if you have a digestive issue here and you're not able to fully digest that protein, you could get in a situation where the protein's not digested, if you have a leaky gut, some of those fractions that aren't fully digested can get across um, into the systemic circulation, which leads to an inflammatory reaction, which leads to an immune system reaction, which leads to poor signaling, not just poor signaling, wrong signaling going up through all of these different pathways. And so, you know, that is like static almost going, instead of these clear signals of, of good or bad, you get this static that's going up. So it isn't necessarily that gluten is bad or that casein is bad, but it's your microbiome it's your gut that's bad so you, you know you can think of it as 
chicken and egg syndrome. You know, do you now get into a situation where you say, okay, let's, let's, let's remove the offending food that's causing the problem. But if you don't, and, 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 you know, you might get some, you might get some benefits because you remove something that's problematic, but it's problematic because there's a problem in the gut. And so the real question would be, let's fix the gut. How do we fix the gut so that these foods aren't a problem anymore? That's what's really the underlying thing. And so the, 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 the issue that's challenging to talk about on a webinar really has to be handled on an individual basis is, do you need to remove those foods so you're removing an insult so that you can get the healing and then you can add those foods back later? That's the beauty of, of, of working with somebody that is experienced in elimination diets where they can say, okay, we're going to remove this, see what happens. We're going to remove this, see what happens. But if that person is not also going to this piece and saying, we're going to remove this food, see what happens while we're healing the gut, while we're reestablishing a, 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 a less dysbiotic, a more balanced microbiome, unless you're doing that piece of it, as soon as you add the foods back, you're going to be having the problem because it's not the food that's the problem. It's this that's the problem. It's the gut imbalance that's the problem. Um, so other, other things, there can be problems with texture. There can be problems with, you know, too much sugar. Processed foods are a problem, definitely, not just because of the high sugar, not just because of, of food additives and artificial this and artificial that, but which, which these microbes don't recognize, right? So they kind of go haywire in a certain state. Uh, a certain standpoint. But a lot of the reason that processed foods are not good for your microbiome is because they lack fiber. And when they're lacking fiber, your good bacteria have nothing to grow on, right? It's like, it's like you threw styrofoam down there and said, okay, bon appetit, everybody. We can't do anything with styrofoam. It's the same thing when you eat low fiber foods. You're, the bacteria that you want to grow, those good bacteria, they basically starve. And when they starve out, the bad guys can start to grow and they'll grow on other stuff like sugars and you know different fats and things like that. That's a discussion for another time. Why in the world do I have sunburn here? How is ADHD and, and autism spectrum disorders like a sunburn? Um, it's, it's, it, it's hard for a lot of people to visualize the inside of your gut lining, but you can think of your gut, what it experiences it's kind of like experiencing the outside world. Your gut is a barrier between the inside world, which is your systemic circulation and everything inside of us, and the outside world. So the outside world is here, where, you're, where, you're, where your bacteria live and where your food goes, that's the outside. Even though it's inside of us, it's the outside environment. It's, a, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's an external thing. So I want you to think of this gut lining like your skin, right? It's an outside barrier. It's supposed to protect us from the environment around us. It's supposed, it can let some things in, but it keeps most things out. And the things that it lets in, it lets in very selectively. That's what normal, normal digestion, normal absorption um, helps, us, helps us achieve. So think about a sunburn. You're bright red lobster colored. Um, and so you've caused some damage there, right? Your skin is damaged now. Even if you go and try to put something good on that, you try to put on some moisturizing cream, it hurts. You try to put on some aloe, it hurts. If you put on some acid, it would hurt. If you, if you took a wire brush and abraded yourself, it would hurt, right? So good things and bad things hurt because you've damaged that tissue that's trying to protect you from the external world. It's the same exact thing when you have a dysbiotic, out of balance microbiome, it's hurt. If you add even good stuff, sometimes that can cause problems. Your gut lining might be hurt. It might be actually physically inflamed and reactive. Even if you add what should be a soothing food, it might hurt because it's in a damaged situation. So we really need to fix that tissue. If we, if we expect to get any sort of meaningful changes throughout the rest of the system. Okay. So I hope I haven't beaten that dead horse too much, but it's a really, really important point. Um, Here's a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a visual that I think after describing it as a sunburn, you might get it more, 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 um, more clearly. So here's your inside of your intestine. Here's that lining I was referring to as your skin. That's your, that's your this is one part of your line. This is the mucosal lining. Um, you can think of this as a, as, a, as a barrier. So this is the rest of your body, this pink area. Your, it's just labeled as your blood. So there's one layer 
where this external environment is protected from the internal environment, your blood. And there's another layer, your blood brain barrier, that's protecting this environment from the brain. But all of this good stuff, these are the amino acids that are the precursors to those neurotransmitters that I talked about before, tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and a bunch of other ones, precursors for serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline, norepinephrine. Um, so, you know, you have to look at what we're giving in terms of the diet, building blocks, these amino acid building blocks, what the microbiome is producing, because the microbiome will take some of those building blocks and produce, meaning your food, and, and they'll actually produce more of those amino acids. So you can see the microbiome producing those amino acids that get across in the systemic circulation are used across the blood brain barrier in the brain to make some of these neurotransmitters. They're also making, these microbiome cells are making actual finished neurotransmitters that will get across. And as I said before, they're not gonna get across the blood brain barrier, but they can have signaling through the immune system and the nervous system. So it's important to make sure that each level of that system are, are are sort of appropriately balanced. So when we get into a leaky gut situation, here's your, here's your gut down here, your bloodstream. I'm sorry, here we go, it's flipped, it's, it's flipped this time. So here's your food up here and your microorganisms, your, your microbiome here. This is what your gut should look like with tight junctions. They look kind of like when you see them on a, mic, in, in a, on, on a, on a microscope, they look like bricks right up next to each other. Brick, 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 with a little bit of mortar in between, um, nice and tight. When they're leaky, this is when this stuff can get across. And I, I said before, this is gonna lead to inflammation. It's gonna lead to immune system disruptions. It can sometimes lead to autoimmunity where now your immune system is going haywire, like in a panda situation, and starting to attack other aspects of your body. And this can lead to a wide range of, you know, we talk mostly here about these neurological disorders, depression, anxiety, ADD, autism, et cetera. But also, you know, autoimmune disorders where your immune system is out of whack, it's not properly primed. And metabolic disorders even, obesity, diabetes. This is one of the reasons why we're seeing so many people who come into Amare for the mental wellness benefits, neurological issues, and they get these other issues that we sort of generally refer to as these physical sort of benefits, these physical health benefits that they, that they had no idea they were gonna get because it's all part and parcel of the same biochemistry, which leads to the same psychiatry, which leads to the same inflammation, um, you know, immune system uh, changes. So um, there, I, I think I talked about this. I'm not gonna go through this one again, uh, but I will say this now, why in the world do we think that this could help in either of these situations, autism spectrum disorders um, or, or uh, ADD or pandas, right? So I gave you a good overview on the fact that the issues here are not just here in the brain. The issues here could partly be here, but predominantly they're someplace else, largely in the gut. Um, we can look at mechanistic types of studies, right? So rodents are used a lot of times to sort of be proof of concept, right? Does this idea, you know, I just showed you a bunch of cartoons, right? Does the idea on the cartoon actually show itself in a biological system? Because a lot of times things that look good on paper, you test them out in a biological system and you go, huh, it didn't work as well as we thought, why? Right? So using those animal models sometimes is necessary before you go to human models and you know, to see if, if, if that, if that um, intervention is actually going to have an effect. So here, this is a little bit fuzzy to see, but this, this demonstrates proof of concept that, that, that this mechanism might actually help in an intact um, mammal. Uh, and so this is, for, this is from a mouse study. Probiotic treatment of mice with autism features, right? So you don't really know if a mouse has autism. You don't really know that a mouse is depressed or has focus issues, but they exhibit certain behaviors that are like that condition in humans. So, you know, sometimes these studies will refer to autism-like conditions or depression-like behaviors. Um, and so what we can do is we can get a mouse that is genetically predisposed to, you know, one of those conditions. Uh, we can change their microbiome in various ways and see what manifests in terms of the behavior of that living organism. So you can alter the composition of the gut microbiome. So use the probiotics to change the architecture, change the balance of what that microbiome looks like. 
that has an effect on improving the epithelial barrier integrity. That basically is taking that leaky gut and making it tight junctions again, right? So you use the probiotics, you change what the microbiome in the gut looks like, that has a healing effect to tighten up those junctions and make that a more uh, a, a, a tissue with better integrity. That reduces the leakage of the, the, those compounds from the, from the outside, right, the inside of the gut, into our systemic circulation. It restores serum metabolites. So basically that restores the signaling across that system and then it ameliorates or, or lessens the autism related behaviors. So from, from giving probiotics to changing autism behaviors step by step by step by step through all of the different steps that I just discussed that we know are involved in terms of different levels of imbalance. And so one of the, one of the concepts right now is that where you are on that spectrum of, uh, of attention or autism, the, 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 your degree of slide on that spectrum might have to do with how many of these layers are disrupted. So you consider somebody who has just a little bit of focus issues might just, might just have one of those neurotransmitters a little bit low or a little bit unbalanced with one of the other neurotransmitters, right? So not so much imbalance. But somebody else who's more on, on one, of these, you know, one of these ASD spectrums with a lot of issues might have some neurotransmitter problems and some immune system problems and some stress hormone problems and some uh, inflammatory problems and some gut uh, leakiness problems and some microbiome problems. And you see where that's going, right? The more problems you have, the more places of disruption, the more degree of imbalance, the more, the more behavioral issues are gonna manifest, right? That's nutritional psychology. That's looking at the, you know, so nutritional psychology is really, all right, how do we fix all of that? How can we give the thing, change the thing, give more of the good food, less of the bad food, so that we can rebalance all the way along that chain so that we change the behaviors. And from a, from a mechanistic perspective, we know we can do this. This kind of data has been repeated many, many times now in, in different rodent models of depression, of anxiety, of ADD-like behavior, of autism spectrum-like behavior. Um, and so we know that, we know that it's, um, it's proven from a, from a, from a theoretical perspective um, in those biological systems. But what happens when we do it in humans, right? Um, it also works and it works exactly the same way. Um, so this is a very busy slide. Um, the, the key takeaways from this slide are, first of all, it's humans. Um, it's people with autism. Um, and it was a phenomenally successful intervention. Unfortunately, the intervention was a microbial intervention, but it wasn't probiotic therapy. It wasn't giving probiotics. It wasn't giving prebiotics. It wasn't changing diet, right? That's what we have the option to do from, a, from sort of a, a self-treatment, self-care perspective. What this was, was a, a study that looked at that people with autism, um, I can't remember, I wanna see if, there, if the number of people is on here. Um, because, well, I've got the paper right here. I can tell you how many people were in the paper. Um, it was, oh uh, gosh, I can't see right now. It's not saying in the abstract. Um, 18, 18, um, autism spectrum disorder diagnosed patients. The reason I want you to understand that is because there were only two that did not respond to this therapy. The therapy is basically doing a full microbiome transplant on these people. Um, and so the way that they do that, there, there's a couple ways to do that. There's one to do what's called a fecal microbiome transplant, where you take a, you take a, a feces sample, a poop sample from a healthy donor and you apply it to the, to, the, to the sick person, to the person with the condition. This has been, this kind of therapy, you know, poop swaps like that, has been shown to be amazingly effective in certain um, intestinal infection sort of diseases, particularly one called C. diff, Clostridium difficile. People die from this. Hundreds of thousands of people die from this every single year. Um, and it, it's very resistant to treatment. But you can take the feces from a healthy person inoculate it into the sick person and the sick person 95% of the time is cured and is cured very rapidly. And so that's one way to do it. 
but the, but the question always is, how do you know that person is healthy? How do you know that person doesn't have other conditions, right? You might use their feces to cure this clostridium uh, uh, infection that's leading to diarrhea and things like that. But what if they also have depression? Could you transfer that? What if they also have anger? Could you transfer that? What if they also have ADD? Could you transfer that? And so that's one of the issues right now. How do you properly screen um, a, 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 a fecal donor? And so there, there, there are some biotech companies, some pharmaceutical companies that are looking and saying, well, wait a minute, could we discern in that feces what are the important aspects of the microbiome and could we recreate that and could we inoculate that? Now, that's something that's, that's, that's it's not called an FMT, a fecal microbiome transplant. It's called a, a microbiome transfer therapy, M MTT is what they typically call that. And so it's, it's, it, it's sort of giving not the full feces profile, but, but a, a, you know, sort of a core collection of that. And that's what they did in this study. That's why I went through that long explanation. There's a lot of ways to skin this cat. But what you have to do with this kind of therapy is you have to completely clean out the dysfunctional microbiome before you replace it with the new microbiome. So think about this. We're all sitting here watching this on our computers or our cell phones. Um, if, if you had a virus on your computer, you might be able to just go in and clean it out with an antivirus yeah. software, right? That's like a that's like a you know antiviral therapy or or, or an yeah. antibiotic. Um, but you can also, if it's a if it's a really systemic infection, so to speak, you might have to reboot your entire operating system. You know, do a hard reset, get the get the old one out of there, re, re clean the hard drive so it's down to nothing, put an entire new operating system on there, and boot it back up again. That's exactly what they did here. And so I just wanna share two pieces of data. So it's, it's, it's 18 kids with autism spectrum disorder um, and, and two really important parts of this, uh, of this data set. You can see the purple. Purple are the kids um, at, they, the therapy was eight weeks and then they followed them for another period of time after that, right? So the therapy was you know, this, this sort of application of the microbiota weekly for eight weeks. The purple kids are the ones that responded. The gray ones are the ones that did not respond. So eight, I don't know what the math is, 18 out of two, two out of 18, pretty darn good response rate. The first set of bars up here are gastrointestinal um, complaints, right? So you can see a clear trend of less and less and less GI problems over those eight weeks that persisted out for two weeks after that and, and eight weeks after that. So even after you remove the, the weekly therapy, there's a persistent effect. So those microbiome changes stuck and they maintain themselves. That's really cool. This other piece, this is um, parent graded responses, right? So with these kids, you can't necessarily have them filling out surveys, right? They're the ones with the behavioral issues. And so you have the parents fill out those surveys. And what you see is higher numbers here means better performance, better behavior. And again, a very clear improvement in those autism spectrum disorder types of behaviors. So the gut improves, the brain improves, and it's because the microbiome was changed. So I wanna go back just to remind you guys of something, right? This is a very progressive bio, like um, logical biochemical hierarchy here, right? You change the, the, the biome, you change the gut integrity, you changed what was happening across that, that gut blood barrier, so to speak, you change the signaling throughout the axis, and as a result of that, you change the behavior. Right. It's, it's absolutely mind blowing what we can do now because and we couldn't we couldn't do this kind of stuff five years ago because of some of the reasons that I said before. Right. So this is when 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 people hear me talk about this and they hear me get so excited by it. It's because as a scientist, there's very few times in your career and there's very few times in the history of our lifetimes that the science changes this drastically, that the science changes enough where something that we had no concept about five years ago now is, is gonna be a mainstream therapy, right? So I told you what I did with my ADD child. Um, it's the same thing that I did with my ADD self in terms of that herbal therapy. Um, now we're able to go to another level, ten, you know, 10 years down the road, another level of maintaining and improving and optimizing that gut-brain axis so we get more and more 
benefits. Uh, we, we couldn't do this before. It's completely changing how we think about uh, the entire field of mental wellness. Um, and so, you know, what we've got here is the bad news, I guess, is that we haven't gotten to the level where we know specifically which bacteria are out of balance in which specific person, right? We'll get there eventually. We'll be able to say, instead of doing a complete reboot of your system, we can say, you know what? We've gone in there and done some analysis and it's this one strain or it's this family of strains and, and we, can, we can give you that. Here you go. Um, we, that, that's where medicine is going. That's where science is going right now. What we know now, I'm just going to focus you on one aspect from one of these recent studies. You can look at bacterial levels on, on lots of different levels of sensitivity at the phylum level, class, order, blah, blah, blah. We talk a lot about strains. This doesn't even go to the strain level. But at the species level, one of them that pops out being a difference between kids with ADD and normal controls is this one, Bifidobacterium longum, tends to be only about half in terms of, um, in terms of um, its, its uh, concentration in the gut. So this one, Bifidum, Bif and, and hard to explain exactly what this slide is showing, but basically Bifidum, Bifidobacterium longum is about half the potency or half the concentration you would want it to be um, in that population of ADD compared to a non-ADD population. So that makes us go, huh, all right, we know that one is low. I wonder if we supplemented that one, could we get a focus effect um, in, those, in those ADD kids? And, and, you know, we actually don't know the answer to that right now, but that's a, that's a subject for a, for, a future, for a future study. What we do know right now is that with a product like Mentobiotics, if we supplement with specific strains, we can get these sorts of benefits, right? So now I've shifted a little bit and I've said, you know, we've, we've just talked about ADD, ADHD, and autism and explain sort of how that all, where that disruption might come from and how we might change that disruption, change that um, back to a rebalanced state. Um, we don't have an autism product. We don't have an ADHD product, but we do have products that work in very similar me mechanistic ways. So these changes in mood state are coming from changes in good bacteria. So, you know, these aren't necessarily collected in people with ADHD or autism. They're collected in people who have depression and anxiety. Um, but the same idea of those neurotransmitters overlapping in those people, this could be a very effective therapy for people who are in those situations. Um, remember that Bifidobacterium longum that I mentioned two slides ago? Here's one of them that we're using in that mentobiotics formulation. This is Bifidobacterium longum, but we're going right down to the species level and choosing this 175, stra I'm sorry, strain level, and choosing this 175 strain because we know it delivers anti-anxiety effects and cognitive effects, right? So think back to what population we found is low in B. longum. It's those kids with AD ADHD, right? So if we want to improve cognitive functioning, Maybe that's an approach that we could take. Um, we've got uh, neurotransmitter rebalancing. Um, instead of going after one of those, you know, black box warning uh, uh, drugs that I put up there, the Ritalins and the Vivances and the Concertas and things like that, why not come at the brain with a, a rebalancing of neurotransmitters through natural means? That's why we have this GBX proprietary blend, which is polyphenols, flavonoids, that can help improve that balance. That's why we see things here like improved neurotransmitter balance, mental focus, uh, enhanced blood flow throughout the entire body, including to the brain, um, changes in gut balance, inflammatory balance, immune system function. These are all the things that are out of balance across the gut brain axis that we talked about earlier in the call. And I'm almost done here. I've got just a couple more slides. Um, Mentafocus is, a, is, is, a, is another approach for that. Mentafocus is a product that is really geared towards, you know, increasing memory, but it does it through a mechanism that's, that's, that's improving overall brain activation in areas of the brain involved in memory, but also in areas of the brain 
that are involved in what's called a, a sort of a fear response, the stress response system. So if we can make changes in the gut with microbiome, if we can make changes in the brain with polyphenols and, and, and helping with, with neurotransmitter and blood flow, we're able to get effects where cognitive processing is faster. What you're looking at here, in which I go into some great detail in our deep dive when we talk specifically about focus issues, we're looking at you know, substantial improvements in, in the speed of the brain. And that's something with, especially kids who have ADHD, they're not able to you know, do that quick processing and so they, and so they, kind, of, they kind of shut off in a way. They get, they get interested in something else. Um, and then the sync system, right? Syncing across all aspects of these ingredients. You remember you saw short chain fatty acids on a couple of the slides. This zinc carnosine is a way to help improve the integrity of the intestinal lining and the mucosal layer that protects the, the, protects the lining. Um, a lot of times, I didn't talk too much about mucus. I mean, why, why shouldn't I? We talked about poop a lot on this call. But mucus is one of the things that can protect the lining of that, of that, of that gut from becoming reactive. So remember I was talking about um, the gut being damaged and almost anything that you throw in there, whether it's a good food or a bad food, causing problems, right? It's that sunburn. If that mucus layer is thin or if it's gone, that lining is going to be very reactive to everything. And that reaction is going to be transmitted through the entire body. So short chain fatty acids and zinc carnosine can help maintain that integrity and maintain that maintain that mucosal lining. And then we've got the alpha glucans and beta glucans to help with the signaling across, across that immune system. So lots and lots of ways that we can do this. I'm not going to go through the rest. We've got We've got our reboot product, which is the way for us to, you know, restore balance there. Similar, you know, they did a, they did a cleanse kind of a, 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 a kind of an approach before they did the, the MTT, the microbiome uh, transfer in those autistic kids, right? They got rid of that disruptive operating system. We're doing a very similar thing with our, with our reboot. Um, so lots and lots of options that we can take for people. Uh, maybe I will click through just, uh, I'll, I'll end on this. Um, with the reboot, one of the ways that we're having a natural approach to resetting that operating system, so to speak, resetting that microbiome balance is through the foods that we're recommending. So we're recommending foods that will preferentially grow those good bacteria that do the good signaling. And we're starving out because you're not eating these foods on the avoid side, you're starving out those bad bacteria. So you're trying to get rid of some of that static. That can really be a good first step. Even for kids sometimes, if they're in those situations, a lot of times I'll say for kids, this is probably something that they can skip. Right? They can just go right towards the good nourishing repopulation, get that gut brain axis into, a, into an optimized state. But if they're having severe issues, you might want to do that reset. And that's, and that's what this rebooting is. It's just like I said, rebooting, doing that hard, that hard reboot on your, on your computer hard drive. Um, so I want to do this. I'm going to skip over a couple of slides. I had a couple other things here, but it's starting to get long. Um, I want to end on this which is where we started, the mental wellness continuum. This is really where it's at. I mean, we can take anybody, no matter where you are, whether it's in this middle and you're just sort of, you know, the modern day person who just thinks this is how it's going to be, right? This is my stressful life. This is how it's going to be for until the day I die. No, we can help you be better. You can be way down here in one of these you know, very low situations, and maybe we're doing this in concert with your doctor to try to get you out of this complete quagmire where you don't think there's any hope at all up to here where you just feel normal, right? Normal these days isn't the, the way we want people to feel. We want people to feel optimized. We want you to feel energetic and motivated and, and you, know, uh, you know, on your game during the day, but then relaxed and, and you know, ready to, you know, ready to have low tension and good quality sleep and things like that at night. That should be your normal circadian rhythm, which is, we'll do circadian rhythm deep dive some night. That is driven by this gut brain axis imbalance sometimes too. So, you know, we want to get you up here. We think we can do it with our products. We've been, we've been selling products for almost five months now, and we're seeing amazing, amazing results. 
around, around the whole country. So um, I'm going to end it there. I'm going to stop recording. Um, we're going to have, there were a zillion questions here. So what I'm going to do, I think, is go through these questions. Maybe next Thursday on the deep dive, we'll end up doing a open mic and we'll do question and answer. I'll answer some of these questions. I'll answer any other questions you guys want to send in to customer support or to me directly. And, uh, and we'll do that next time. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing right here. I'm going to go up and figure out where, where the recording went to. Um, let me see. Here we go. Stop recording.